Hey, what is up? What's going on? How you doing? <laughs> uh, I was tagged again. I was tagged by Kid Stuff One, okay, to do a video called on the knife that started it all, okay. Now, I really wished I could show the knife that started it all, but I don't have the knife that started it all. <laughs> if I did, if I did, I'd show you, but I don't. So, the only thing I can do is I can tell you about it. Now, um, long time ago, things were different back in the 70s when I was a kid and in the early 80s. Uh, I'm not real sure when Rambo came out, but you know, naturally, I was like all the other kids. I really liked Rambo. Love the movie, it was a good movie. Um, but probably the knife I'd say that started it all for me was a knife that was made by my brother and of all places, high school shop. And you know nowadays you can't even have, you can't even have a, um, you can't even have knives in school no more. Can't even have knives anymore. So, um, but it was a knife that he made. And uh, I really loved that knife. It was a spectacular knife. Let's see. But it's weird because it wasn't, and the bad thing is, I don't even know what happened to that knife. I, I have no idea. I wished I did know. Like I said, if I knew if I knew where that knife was, you know, I'd show it to you. But it's uh, he made it in shop back when you were allowed to make things like that, and it was a pretty big knife. It was a uh, it had a wooden it had a wooden handle, and it had uh, a brass uh, hand guard on it. And uh, as far as I know, I don't think my brother ever I don't think he ever made a sheath for it. And uh, like I say, I really wish I knew what what happened to that knife, and uh, but it's a, it's it's a far cry from the knives that I carry nowadays, because everybody knows that I like the black tactical look and um, the uh, Cordura sheaths. I don't have I only have one knife that's got a leather sheath, and um, I don't know. I just I've grown to like the tactical look. Now that knife that my brother had, <clears throat> it was a big, it was a large fixed blade like a bowie knife. So you know how kids love big knives like that. Up until that point, all I had seen was pocket knives. And so that's why, that's why it was so interesting to me. And that's why I fell in love with it. And it's kind of weird now how times have changed because everybody knows now that my style is Everybody knows that now my style is the black tactical look for knives. I like the Cordura sheaths, the black blades. And see, the knife that my brother had made was uh, had a wooden handle and a brass pommel, or hand protector or thumb protector, whatever you call it. But he never made a sheath for it, but if it needed a sheath, it was going to wind up having to have a leather sheath. Just because that was the way a knife like that was done.
All right, let's see what we got in the bag here. Oh, my, let's see. Well, like I said, I wished I could show you the, I wished I could show you the knife, but I just, I don't have the knife. I don't know what happened to it, and it kind of bothers me, you know, because it's something that was handmade by my brother years ago, so I wished he still had it. All right, let's see what we got right here. Got a foam pad. Got camo tarp. And inside I got a reflective blanket. All right. Let's see if we can throw all this together and make kind of a comfortable shelter out of this little frame here. Now, I will say something else on kind of an odd note. Uh, for a lot of my younger viewers, and just the way things change, uh, it's incredible that when I was growing up as a kid, I was born in 67. Well, when I was born in 67, I was in middle school, elementary school and middle school, all throughout the 70s. So... It's amazing. Almost every kid that I went to school with, they had a pocket knife in their pocket at school. And uh, it wasn't any big deal back then. And uh, I can tell you another story. It's kind of insignificant, I guess, because it didn't really affect me. But I remember I was on the fourth grade and I was on the school bus. And I found a knife it was a folding knife on the school bus laying in the floor. And it was, the brand name was Sabre, S-A-B-R-E. And uh, I never forget, I asked around and asked around, I asked everybody and I never could find out who owned it. But it was a folding knife and it's got pearl handles. And uh, I asked everywhere, I asked everybody, tie two logs together, I asked everybody, where it was, I mean, if, if they owned it. I asked everywhere. I asked, I asked, I asked, I asked. Nobody ever said that they owned it. So, I got to keep it. And that didn't really... Uh, that didn't really spark my interest for knives, I don't think, or collecting, but I kept it. <laughs> and I suppose that was, you know, we were poor. Dad didn't buy us nothing. So, for a fourth grader, that was pretty cool. You know, that was actually my first knife. And I haven't lost that. I still got it somewhere. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be comfortable. All right, now that we're done talking about knives, I guess I can talk to you. I'll go ahead and throw in there my my two cents on on machetes because I've everybody knows I love machetes. And I have a bunch of them. Thought I heard something. Anyway, <laughs> uh, everybody knows that I love machetes, and I've got several machetes. And uh, it's amazing. Machetes weren't real rampant back then. They didn't have a whole lot of designs, I don't think, or at least not a whole lot that nobody knew about. You know, the majority of the machetes were those long, slender kind, and uh, kind of like what's uh, the it's there's one made by Ontario. It's got a handle. It's called a field machete, and then there's one that's it's a jungle machete, I think. And um, they um, oh, can't dig down into my pocket. Uh, anyway, those machetes they've been around forever, and uh, I distinctly remember when I was a kid going to the neighbor's house, and I'd always heard about. I'd always heard that the neighbor's dad had a machete. And uh, he kept on asking, we kept on asking to see it. And so finally one day, he was allowed to bring it out. And, uh, you know, I'd been around axes before because my dad had an axe. And uh, he taught us how to swing it. And, you know, I grew up heating a house with a wood-burning stove with uh, logs. So... 
I knew all about axes, but there was just something about a machete, you know, because an axe was an axe, but a machete was just a big blade. <laughs> you know, I mean, there was just, there's an allure about it. There was an allure about something as, as a kid, and there's an allure about something about it now, you know. But anyways, I was saying, I, I think that machete is actually called, if I remember right, Maybe an, an Ontario SP-1, maybe, I think. But I've bought several of them over the years, and uh, I brought one. I got one in my pack right there, and I know you've seen it a thousand times. I got the Sawback version, and I've had plenty of them. Absolutely had plenty. Here, let's move you down. right here of my bathtub. See what you do is you sit in here and that reflective blanket kind of cups you. As you can see, this is kind of, it's got kind of a bathtub type floor and that reflective part, not only you got the foam pad under you and then you got the reflective tub part reflecting your heat back on you and keeping the ground from sucking the heat right out of you. And you got those logs leaned up against the tree. To me, this is actually more comfortable than any, any tent and sleeping bag. snagged it on my machete and see if the rain comes from uphill down it ain't gonna get on me it's gonna wash right over uh, oh yeah Woo! like in a lap of luxury <laughs> all right oh. now like I said this ain't beautiful but I ain't trying to win no beauty contest. Hey, hold on a second. Does anybody care what this this shelter looks like? Hey, an echo. Looky coo! Can you tell I don't have a lot to say on this video? <laughs> All right, now comes the part where I have to throw the outside cover over it. Y'all remember me telling me, tell me, not you, me telling you. <laughs> I'm behind the camera. <laughs> now, remember me telling you about these eye stakes with the hooks only? This is a perfect example of using these things. And I really don't like those guy lines because you trip over them anyway. Three for this side and three for the other side. Hook it on. Uh, shove it in the ground. There you go. Now, we'll go to the other side and stake it in there. Now, I'm assuming you can kind of see the end of this thing. I got a little bit of extra overhang up ahead because this tarp is a lot longer than where I'm going to be sleeping. The foam pad and the reflective blanket. That way, this is kind of like my little vestib vestibule. <laughs> it's like my little roof where I can put my backpack 
and I can put my boots when I sleep there at night. Okay? All right. Anyway, I'll show you that machete here in a minute talk to you about it. Hey, I started, I started wearing a hand-knitted wool hat. Cause I got to notice them when I was wearing those fleece toboggans, I was sweating at night. But this keeps my head warm and it allows my hair to breathe. So that's a must have. Oh, one of my friends knitted it for me. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got in here. I went ahead and decided I wanted to try something. I brought two of my bows. This is my oldest one. It's a willow bow. Okay, it's got a leather cordage. And I brought my newest one. This is pretty cool because it's it's got a nice hand hold on it. I'm gonna try that one out. Let's see. Extra blanket. Let's see. Cook kit. Oh, I don't need that lighter. What else we got? Oh, grill. Put that over there. See, everything over here is now under roof, which is pretty cool. Let's see what I got in here. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Now, a headlamp. That's a little piece of a cattail. Comes in a little container whenever I find cattail. I'll uh, hang it around my neck if I don't have my backpack with me. All right, let's see. A couple of bearing blocks for my bow drills. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I was wanting to bring the bow drill because it's been raining for a couple of days and I was wanting to see how it do in moist weather. Now one of the tricks of storing your spindle and your hearth board if you're going to carry it with you in uh, damp weather, before you leave home, wrap them in aluminum and foil. And the cool part is, after I get the fire started, then I got aluminum and foil that I can use for cooking food in the fire. So it's, it's like a win-win situation. All right, I'm going to gather up some firewood and then I'll get that out. Oh, wait a minute. Let me show you this right here real quick, too. Mm, where did it go? Okay, here it is. This right here, let me pull this off so I can get the sheath out. This is the machete I was talking about. Okay? It's just a standard, plain Jane, old-fashioned machete. And I can promise you, I have wore out at least four of these. I think this is number five. And then I got one that's got a handle on it. But that right there is the machete right there that started my love for machetes. You know? So, anyway. And of course, it's got a nice... It comes in a piece of cardboard, and I bought a the sheath for it by uh, True Spec. They make really good sheaths. I got, like, camo and olive drab. So, all right, let me show you something else here real quick. Another little tip. Let's run this up some. I don't know how all y'all do it, but a lot of times I'll have a light hanging from my roof inside my shelter. But another thing, I always make sure and have a light where I can find it. You see? That's a good spot for it, right here, hanging from the end. That way I'll, I'll know where it's at. I hope it don't rain. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get some firewood, and then we're going to play around with that bow drill just a little bit, and I'll see what I can do with it. Uh, all right, well, I got me some firewood here, and guess what? Not only did I forget, I remember the coffee, and I remember the food, but not only did I forget the creamer and the sugar, I forgot the list of people I'm going to tag. <laughs> so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to flash them across the screen, okay, uh, when I'm doing the bow drilling uh, or attempting. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, let's see right here, man. Same it down. Right here. All right, I got you back. I'm going to set up a fire right here. I'm going to try something. Let's see. Kind of clear out a spot here. Of course, you'll notice I don't use the good machete for this for dragging leaves around everywhere. Well, I mean, this is a good machete. It's just, you know what I mean. I don't use a real super high quality one. Let's see what we got here. Wait a minute. 
All right, let's get the good machete out here for a minute. I'll show you something kind of neat here while I got you here. You know, I've been feeling like I've been getting kind of sick lately, so I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to get to get out and make a video again. And, you know, Christmas time's always real busy. So, all right, let's try this right here. I like to shove that stick in at an angle. Okay. All right. Get all this right here. See, that way what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a place to put my tender bundle. I'm just going to start piling a bunch of, bunch of sticks right here. See, that way I can put my tender bundle under right here. Can you see it? Get this right here. Oh, me. I'm getting to be an old man. <laughs> Let's see. Show you a pair. Like there. Wrap this around a few times. Just start wrapping it. Wrapping it. And then I fold this over in the middle and start wrapping it. Okay. And there you go. Arr, crush it real good. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it under here. Can you see that part right there? Cranky down. And I can't even see it. <laughs> My leg is in the way. Yeah, you can see that. See how it's got this little place up under here? I'll cut up some more of this wood or break it up. I'll put some of this bigger stuff out here on the outside. I'll clear some more of these leaves out. Kind of sloppy attempt at a fire, but you know how it is. Then I will get, let's see, man, I can't find nothing. All right, let me get out the bow drill and set it up. And so that way, once this goes, I can just shove it up under here and then I'll put sticks on top of it. All right, after hunting around, I found my little piece of a cattail. And like I said, I carry it in a little container. I mean, I've got a little container that I'll carry some around with me for just times like this when it's, Oh, so damp. Oh, me. It's been raining up like crazy. So what I do is I take my tender bundle. And this is just kind of extra insurance to get it going. Because it's, like I said, it's been raining for a while here. Okay. I take the excessive and put it back in there. And see, that way, that's that's another thing like what I, I like to call a trail renewable resource. Because there's plenty of it out here. See, this is just... This is some fantastic fluffy stuff right here, you know? All right, let's see. There you go. And that's just, that's a real nice little bed there for my tender bundle. See so what I'll do with it, once I put the ember in there and get it blowing, I'll shove it up under there. And then that's when I put the smaller stuff on top of it to keep it going. All right, let's give this a shot. Take my machete, lay it on here. Let's see, get a couple of leaves. Do, do, do. Here we go. As you'll notice, I'm just out here goofing off enjoying the weekend out in the woods. <laughs> That's what I'm good at. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you got to get out. You know, even if you don't have time, you got to get out. You got to get out and go hang out. Have some fun out here. Get this whistle off. I hang that whistle. It's good to have a whistle, too. It's a signal device. I hang it up over my light. Because, you know, when you're out here by yourself, it can be quite dangerous. All right, see, now I'll probably cook on that later. All right, see, how we're going to do this? I'll put that right there. And we'll put a couple of leaves here to catch the amber. Oh, and hopefully everybody won't die laughing. See, this thing, most bows are perfectly round. or I mean, it's, it's, it's good to have a round one. But this has got like a flat spot that I've noticed is really good to hold on to. Okay. All right. Put this in here. Let me see if I got you on camera. All right. Let's see what we can do now. Now, I, there's a lot of times I'm going to go ahead and try this. 
And you know, y'all don't judge me too harshly because it's been raining big time. Let's see. Yeah, my, my boots are pretty dry. All right, let's give this a shot. Am I on camera now? All right. Oh, I'm gonna put the names up of who I'm tagging while I'm doing this. I'm trying to see if y'all got a good shot of this. Yeah, I think you do. All right, I had a problem, so I had to start over, so I just went ahead and got a fresh leaf here. I had to cut more out here because the spindle kept kicking out. So let's give this another shot, see if we can't do it. May be too moist, may have to give up. But I suppose, you know, since I was dumb enough to forget the list, <laughs> this will be a cool way of flashing the... Can you see there? Okay, if I keep it up high enough, I think you can. I flash the names of who I'm tagging across the screen. See, I might have could have got that quicker, but with me, see a lot of people, they have the skill developed to where they know when to quit. And I really haven't developed that much because as soon as I see smoke, some people know when to keep going and when to stop. I just continue going because I want a big pile of dust and see another thing too I don't mess with it until I got a glowing ember if it's just smoking that's not enough for me see See, I got me a massive pile of dust right there. All right, now I tried not to screw around too much. I still got my ember going right here because it's a pretty big coal. But I wanted to move my camera and get it back over here on the fire. So, all right, what I'm gonna do now, get rid of that other leaf. I'm gonna dump this in the tinder bundle right here. Can you see it? Let's dump all that right in there. Kind of cup it a little bit. You still see it? Fixing the berm hangings. I gotta get less of a grip on it. Fixing to lose it.
Man, this takes forever sometimes. Let's try it this way. See, I don't even know where it's at now. Oh, man. I bet I lost it. See, I made such a sloppy fender bundle. Ah, well. Crap. All right, let's go with plan A. <laughs> now, this is exactly why Dave doesn't like, doesn't like, the, but wait a minute, there it is, it's still going, let's try to save it. All right, lesson, lesson B, <clears throat> always do a good job on your tender bundle, okay? Say a little bit more cattail fluff in there. <clears throat> See, I picked all this stuff today, and evidently it's got so much dang moisture in it. This, this is what's, this is the issue. Ah, oh, well. See, I don't know if it, there it is. Work that hard to get one. All right, now it's time for plan B. I give up, I don't care. This stuff, this irritates me. Every time I've tried to come out here and do this in damp situations, that's what happens. And see how easy that is? That's all there is to it. I hated it. I hate to embarrass myself and look like an idiot, but I don't know. That's real life, I mean, that's, that's the way it is sometimes. I got the amber, but I don't know. I just, I blew and blew and blew and blew and couldn't blow it into flame, so whatever. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, I had fun. I hope y'all did. Uh, I had is. Uh, hope you enjoyed the shelter. So. All right, I got to add some more sticks to that right there couple on there and then I can say goodbye I'm gonna have to go get some more sticks look it's already caught the sticks up on the top on fire which is good I'll add some more to that I'll add some more small ones to it uh, but anyway all right that's my that's my that's my uh, real deal real life ordeal that's the way it is and I guess I'm glad that I showed that, how much trouble it is to do the bow drill for me, and you know how much it is to take some grass that's been out here and been rained on for several days. You just gotta have a flame, you know? So, uh, fire probably doesn't matter anyway. See right over there? Can you tell how dark the sky's getting compared to over that ways? Well, actually, it's getting dark everywhere. Anyway. All right, I hope you had fun. I hope you found the tags that I posted. So, all right, till next time. Hey, maybe, maybe next time I won't fail. <laughs> next time I'm gonna bring a hand drill. All right, till next time, I'll see you.